Because the majority of rollerblading videos we see these days are on YouTube, very few are on VOD and even less are in physical copy, it makes it really easy to forget some of the videos that have come out this year and in some cases it's possible to miss them entirely. So in this video I'm going to do a breakdown of some of what I believe are the best sections of the year so far and yeah, you can give me your opinion on it, let me know if there's any I've missed out. The criteria for it is they have to be a single section. So so it can't be a montage and it can't be part of a larger video so it can't be part of a full length video or a VOD so just standalone online sections. First up is a skater who I believe is one of the most interesting characters we have in rollerblading right now and that's Yandriel Silverio. The first time I saw Yandriel was a few years ago and it was in competition footage and I was just like who is this guy who's just skating around manic eyes wide just looked demented i was like he is awesome then i had the opportunity to interview him and just discovered he was this really sweet sensitive thoughtful guy who you know was quick to make fun of himself was really easy going and it just endeared me to him even further at the start of the year yandriel got a pro wheel from chroma and he brought out a section resonance you can tell Yandriel spends a lot of time thinking about how he wants to present himself, the tricks he wants to do, the obstacles he wants to skate, you know, the imagery he wants to put in the section, and it all came together beautifully in this. He showed that he's incredibly technical. He did true spin top porns, natural and switch. I can't tell them apart. He also did this absolutely wonderful true spin misfit. I've noticed on some of Yandriel's tricks, he gets low as he's approaching the obstacle, as if he's like sneaking up on it, he's gonna surprise it. And it's just that little element that I find really enjoyable about watching his skating. Also, unlike some skaters, like for example, Alex Brosco, who just lands a trick and never looks satisfied. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, but I don't like it. Or prison tat Sean Kelso, who comes off a grind and just looks pissed off. Say don't smile for clips. Say I look angry. You're happy? I don't know, probably not. Yandriel lands a trick and just screams out. <laughs> He's got that intensity and you can just tell that he is like really in the moment. I also like that he's got these little like garnishes that he adds onto the trick, like a little, just a little sprinkle on the top of it, just to give it that little something extra. So he'll land a gap and then he'll do like a little wizard move out of it, or he'll land a grind and he'll just do some kind of shuffle just to basically add a little bit of, here's the trick and here's how much I'm in control of it because I can add another element. Just makes it even better. Also, some of these spots are pretty big. He's not afraid of a steep drop rail. And the ender trick, that ledge is pretty burly. Next up is one of the quirkiest and potentially funniest videos of this year, and it comes courtesy of Ilya Savison for Rosies. The video very playfully messes around with some Russian stereotypes and has giant dogs just munching on his pro skate. Also has him skating in the snow, skating ice sculptures, hanging out in saunas and beating himself with branches. When he's not doing that, he's in a barn doing grinds surrounded by chickens. Or being towed by cars and Seth sliding through snow. Or he takes to a ski slope and grinds the obstacles there. Then he's flipping over fire, grinding rails with chains wrapped around his skates, and riding sleds to jumping on handrails. Did I mention the ice sculptures and the breakdancing? He also laces some switch ups that would definitely have been at home in a Kelso slider bar edit. There's also some big tricks in there as well, like he's grinding kink drop rails, he's doing 360 soles on handrails, he's doing flips off of handrails. Not to mention sizable transfers on kink rails at night in the snow. Again, 
Like Yandrel Silverio, Ilya Savison is one of the most unique characters we have and I genuinely believe that characters are really important to rollerblading because the sport is not enough. Like just having someone that's really talented at skating, it's great, but if they've got no personality to back it up or they've got no unique selling point, it just doesn't really do anything to inspire a community and get them excited. Characters like these get people excited and get them stuck on skating. And if we had more of them, the sport would be much better for it. Next up is a choice that I kind of surprised myself with, and it's the USD promo for Chris Farmer's new Sway Pro Skate. I've been a huge fan of Chris Farmer for years, loved his sections in the Mind Game videos and the Lonnie Gygos videos, but in recent years, admittedly, I've found him a bit predictable, and I just don't really enjoy watching him doing loads of negative variations on rails and skating loads of kinked handrails. It's incredibly impressive, there is no denying he's one of the best street skaters of all time, but there's just only so many times you can see that stuff and I feel like his Instagram clips where he's doing like spins onto rails and messing about with random obstacles is far more interesting than any of the sections he's brought out in recent years, but this one for USD was refreshingly enjoyable. In this latest video, he's not just skating down rails over and over and over. There's a nice mixture of obstacles. He skates some ledge spots. He skates some nice bank spots. Of course, he does skate handrails because that's what he's best at, but he combines it with things like wall rides. And yes, there's a negative thrown in there for good measure. And of course, he stomps a massive kink rail at the end because that's just his bread and butter. But it's nice to see Farmer mixing things up again and keeping things interesting. I also love how one of the spots Chris Farmer skates is actually the spot that Dustin Latimer does a hurricane topsail on in the England video volume. Is that the first ever recorded hurricane topsail? Anyone know? Let me know in the comments. Also, unlike some members of the USD team, <coughs> Richie Eisler, um, Chris Farmer's actually putting in the work and is visible and is still releasing stuff constantly and isn't just on the team without actually putting in any work. Some people on that team are coasting by. Chris Farmer is putting in graft. A recent edit that I really enjoyed is the promo for Sasha Lopez's Pro Frame from 5050. Sasha Lopez had a bit of a rough time. He was on razors and just wasn't happy with the way things are going, so he quit, and it kind of seemed like he might not pick up another boot sponsor. Thankfully, he's now on Icon, but Icon's had this kind of weird start where there's not really been much momentum to it or much excitement around the brand, even though they've now got all their skates out. But this promo for 5050 is legit. He kicks things off with this absolutely textbook front far to sole transfer on a kinked handrail and then there's just a bunch of stylish tricks on display. I'm really a big fan of the way that Sasha Lopez skates. I think the way that he does tricks is really impressive to watch and I love the little creative flares that he comes up with. And despite some people's claims that no one skates hammers anymore, Sasha Lopez skates some big obstacles like this drop kink that he just decides to transfer on, and this other very high drop rail that has a stinking run up and landing. Despite some of the bigger stunts in this section, my favourite thing to watch was where he does the Royal Cess to Aleut Fishbrain to 270 top, so it's just, it's kind of like a transfer and it's something you don't see that much and just looks really engaging. Also, this 270 front royale on this fat long rail is absolute perfection. Stand the fuck up. <laughs> Earlier in the year, Dutch blading legend Sven Boekhurst released not one, not two, but three sections. He released a park section, a vert section, and a street park. The other sections were really impressive, but I want to focus in on the street section because it just defies logic. To put this into context, Sven Boekhurst is 42 years old, I think, possibly even older. He has skated for several decades, won some of the biggest competitions in blading, including the X Games, and he is very much within his right to be washed up and just coasting through life doing safety tricks. In this section, he is going balls out. He kicks things off with an absolutely flawless fakey 270 back salve. Then he's doing true spin top horns on handrails full cab out. 
he's doing fakey 720s down stair sets in a line. Also, the size of the stair set that he fakey sevens isn't little. Then he's transferring rails, doing switch ups on the rail he's transferred on, and then the drop at the end is the equivalent to jumping off a roof. I'm starting to wonder if Sven Boathurst has got some kind of black market dealer for cartilage because I have no idea why his knees are still able to take that kind of impact. He also skates some pretty sketchy handrails in this, like this drop rail that's broken and this really long, steep handrail that he fish brains the shit out of. And then he's grinding off bridges and jumping to steep banks like he's Dustin Latimer and it's the USD team video coup d'etat. Also, this skinny bank to 360 into the other skinny bank is all kinds of danger. He shows that he can hang with the new school by doing channel grinds. He also shows that he is still incredibly technical with triple switch ups. And the way that he got up from getting bodied off the spiral rail shows that this man is an absolute machine because most people would have called it quits after that. He runs right back up the stairs and stomps the crap out of this rail. Next up is one of my favourite skaters from the 90s, Walt Austin. Walt has got a new section out this year called 40 Y'all. I'm not the biggest fan of the filming or editing. It looks like a lot of it was filmed on a GoPro, if not all of it, but the skating more than makes up for it. Walt Austin was wildly underrated for his time. He should have got a pro skate. I know he had that crappy shop pro skate that doesn't count, but his legacy lives on and the influence he's had on multiple generations since is undeniable. In this section, he gets all kinds of weird. I would expect nothing less. He does the kind of Colin Martin anti-gravity thing from one platform to the next. He's doing spins from one transition into the other. He's doing complicated, weird switch up transfers from ledges to ledges to ledges and generally just finding obstacles and ways to use them that other people just don't think of or aren't capable of. We also get to see one of his absolutely classic cess slides that just go on longer than anyone else's. Plus the little session at the end of the edit where he's just doing grinds to like heel spins and toe spins back into other grinds is just classic Walt Austin experimentation. And you kind of see that in skaters these days with people like Don Bruce and Fifth Floor, where you just see him skating an obstacle and just trying loads of different things out and seeing what works. And there's a lot to be said for that kind of experimentation because it pushes roller blading in different directions and shows what is capable and what new things you can still come up with. Another Rosie's section that I loved this year was Bobby Spazov's promo for his new pro skate, Domestic Punk 2.0. I'm not the biggest fan of the skate. I don't really want to wear a skate that says Domestic Punk all over the side of it. I'm about as punk as a sheet of white paper, but I love the edit. I really like the animation at the start. And I am a really big fan of Bobby Spazov. I know he gets a lot of shit. I know people don't like the types of tricks that he does or the way that he skates. I am all for it. I think, again, he's a unique outlier in our sport. He's someone that stands out and his opinions are controversial, but he's blunt, he's transparent, and I think we need more of that in the industry. I also love how a lot of people write him off as just being an Instagram skater or a park skater. Bobby has more than enough street credentials. In this section, he's doing stylish grinds to big spins out. I also really like this nice hurricane fish brain. And for someone who supposedly only skates park, Bobby can stomp a gap. Despite some of the bigger tricks, my favourite was probably where he did the top acid to fakie to top acid drop down on a little ledge setup. Bobby also has some pretty dangerous tricks in this promo. He grinds off a roof, he also grinds off another roof, and the ender is no joke. He is 360 and blind into a bank that's got a sizable drop off the other side and he stomps that with serious authority. You may not like his attitude. I know a lot of people hate the fact that he skated in a skirt earlier this year, but 
Bobby does not give a shit and he's just going to keep on doing his thing and I fully support it. We're at the halfway point. Before we go any further, I just want to thank my Patreon supporters. They're listed on the page here. You can join the Patreon for as little as £3 a month and you'll get access to photos, sneak peeks of videos. You'll get to see the podcast before it comes out on YouTube and other video content. And yeah, it would really help me out. Next up is probably the section I've watched most this year. I must have watched it at least 20 times. And that's Themskate's latest collaboration with Braindead that features the Korean rollerblader Jungkyu Park. I love Jungkyu Park skating. In fact, he's got a section out called Soul Sundays that I don't know if it's on YouTube anymore, but it came out a few years ago. Again, I must have watched that at least 20 or 30 times. This time he's teamed up with Mike Torres. Mike is one of my favorite filmers in Bladen. I'm a huge fan of Nights and Weekends, End of the Road, Bodega Boys, Aeos, the Alex Brosco promos that he did, the Sean Keen VOD that he did. So these two working together, as far as I'm concerned, is just a match made in heaven. Mike has made this one look really weird and surreal and just shows off the kind of oddity of the skate design and Jungkyu skating in it is just absolutely mesmerizing and really confusing. There are so many clips in this that you just have to watch like over and over and over to figure out what he's doing. I just love how smooth he is. I'm a really big fan of how his mind works. Jungkyu is the kind of guy that he could release anything and I would watch it over and over. It's just one of these people. He is amazing at aggressive. If you go on his Instagram, he's just doing jaw dropping stuff all the time. He can weirdly hurricane top, so like it's a safety trick. And if you watch one of the recent them videos, there's a lot of street footage of him in there and he is an animal. The interesting thing about this is Jungkyu hasn't actually been wizard skating that long. I'm pretty sure he only took it up either this year or last year, like midway through last year. So he already has such a great understanding of balance, you know, leaning, foot position, edging, and it is very impressive to watch. One of the top three edits this year, in my opinion, is Austin Paz's By The Slice. Austin Paz teamed up with Butter TV, AKA JP Premiano. Butter TV are responsible, hands down, for some of the best competition coverage of the last five years. And JP has also put out some brilliant sections for other skaters like Justin Brasco. So this collaboration was long overdue and when it came out i was absolutely stunned i didn't actually think we were going to get another austin paz street section because he said before that he just doesn't trust people to film him and he had stuff out in hawaii he had stuff out in puerto rico but i just didn't think we were going to get another solo austin paz section so i'm delighted this came out and austin far exceeded my expectations Everyone knows what Austin's capable of. He has one of the best true spin top soles in the game, which he demonstrates here. Six chambers, 25 years from now. The way I see the new kids coming in, they come out, woo, tang, woo, woo, tang. He's got that textbook style. He gets really low. He lands his tricks properly. He's a perfectionist. But in this section, we saw a really experimental, creative side to Austin that I'd never seen before. And it blew me away. He's doing transfers from the high part of the rail to the low part of the rail, the kind of thing that we're used to seeing Jeff Phillip do in his edits. He's also incorporating things like mushroom blading and wizard skating into his tricks by doing slides in and out of grinds. He also shows off his strengths that he's known for, stomping things like 360 topsails on handrails. He also throws out this absolutely perfect fakey 540 topsail. And he shows off awesome control, so grinding awkward, weird, monster kink rails. Although, despite me praising him for, you know, stepping outside of his comfort zone and doing things that we're not used to seeing him and all the variety that's displayed in this section, my favourite trick is where he does just a really low, stylish A-wall on a handrail. Hey. 
That trick has been around since the 90s and how many people have you seen do it as well and as stylish as that? Not many. Next up and a strong contender for section of the year is Sam Croft's latest video, Tune In, which is a promo for his new USD Aeon. It comes as no surprise that for his latest section, Sam goes absolutely buck. There are so many just monumental potential ender tricks throughout this entire section. And one of the things I like about it is it's not too fast, like it's not just trick, 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 trick. So you get an appreciation of how difficult and how scary some of the tricks are. And the way John Lee's put it together, he also shows the reactions of Sam's friends to some of the bigger tricks. And that gives you context of just how dangerous they are because Sam's friends are used to seeing him skate like that. They're used to seeing him taking risks. And if they're shocked by what's happening, you know it's a big deal. For example, when he jumps over the blind man bumps to do a top sole on this really weird looking dangerous rail and you see James Bower's response, you know it's a big deal. Or when he stomps this back fast slide on the drop rail, again, James Bower's face tells you all you need to know. I also like how this video tells a story about the biggest trick in it. So Sam goes for what is arguably the most reckless trick you can do on that spot. It is, there's so much risk involved. And he does the first attempt, gets absolutely worked. Does the second attempt, gets so hurt that he can't continue skating. But you get to the end of the section and a few months later, he goes back, stomps it. <laughs> The fact that this section has that little narrative with him conquering one of the biggest tricks in the section, as well as the other stunts in it, just shows great storytelling from John Lee and shows that they are a great partnership. They worked together on Sam's last USD Pro Skate promo. It was epic. This one is, is it as good? I would say it's, you know, it equals it. It's, it's really hard to pick them apart in terms of quality. Both have a lot of replay value and do a really good job of promoting the skate. Other honorable mentions from this year are Tom Barrio's USD introduction section. Tom Barrio is one of my favorite UK skaters at the moment. If you follow him on Instagram, he is always doing something really impressive or weird or intricate or creative or just something that you will want to watch over and over again and his promo was quite short but it had some brilliant tricks in there the way he skates this really rough uninviting looking bank setup he just unleashes an arsenal on it and very entertaining to watch i've also got no idea how you can tangle your legs like this and do a set slide on brick and just not eat shit. like i said Huge fan of Tom Barrio and hopefully it won't be long till we see another street section from him. Another great part that possibly went under the radar because it was released on Instagram only first for a little while is Hayden Ball's new section, the Government Centre. Hayden Ball is the master of switch and natural grinds. I'm pretty sure there's not a trick he can't do both ways. And this section starts with him just doing a fakey 540 into a hill bomb like it's nothing. When he's not getting technical and doing every grind natural and switch, he is grinding roofs and throwing himself off them. Also, he could not have landed this rail-to-rail -rail transfer at the end any cleaner. Well, that's it for my best sections of 2022 so far. Let me know which ones you agreed with. Let me know which ones you didn't agree with. Let me know if there's ones you think I missed out. There are other sections coming out that are likely to be absolutely incredible. I know that Basement are working on something. I know that Sean Keen still has his Pro Skate promo to come out and them are no doubt cooking up something as well. So there's a lot to look forward to in the last few months of the year, but this year has already been absolutely amazing for skate video content. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes next. Thanks for watching.